Well, you re and you recently did ADCC. D does the training differ for that then? Going into something like that, do you have a do you are you scouting more? Do you look at the brackets and see like that and get an idea and find video, especially if they're they're veterans like you that have a lot of tape out there? Sure. Normally you could. Uh, I entered ADCC super okay. short notice. Uh, they had invited me a long time ahead of time, but I had told them no because I thought I was going to be fighting around the same time ADCC was happening. Then there was, uh, you know, I had to re-sign with one and to make sure that all the, you know, the contract was worked out well, it took some time. You know, I, I wanted to take be patient with that. I didn't want to like rush it. I didn't want to just sign something that I would, you know, that, that didn't, wasn't mutually beneficial, you know, for both of us and was, I didn't want to sign something and then be unhappy, mm. you know, a year later or this, that, and the other thing to make. So I, I made sure that on both sides, you know, it was something that we could both, um, you know, agree with. And uh, that took a little bit of time and it ended up being the case that I knew I wasn't going to end up fighting the same mm. time as ADCC. But by the time I figured that out, it was like a month before ADCC, you know, that I realized, hell, I'm not going to be fighting on that card mm. anymore. Um, so I was like, hey, guys, listen, you got an open spot. I'm in. And like I had like a month to prepare. So with a month to prepare, honestly, it was just like, hey, let's just get as ready for this rule set as you possibly mm. can. I wasn't worried about specific opponents. I was like, hey, man, you just really need to reach. Because everything that I do now, even though I go to grappling workouts, um, I do a little bit of grappling-specific stuff where I'm just like thinking about how, what I would do in grappling. But a lot of times when I'm grappling, I'm thinking about like what – even though I'm just strictly grappling, I'm not punching anybody or anything like that. I'm thinking about like, all right, like where would I want to transition if I was in a fight mm -hmm. from here to try to make it as similar right. to – what I'm actually going to be doing. You know, my career has changed a lot in that regard and my training has changed a lot in that, in that regard. So for ADCC, that's, I just really tried to adjust based on the rule set more than anything. You said you only had a month. If in the right, you know, circumstances, what would you prefer? Like three months going into something like that? ADCC is like a yeah. pretty big, um, yeah. pretty big deal in the grappling community. It only happens once every two years. So that's really something that, I mean, ideally a minimum of three months, if not like wow. six months ahead of time, I'd already be doing something. I'd already had started prepare. I just hadn't been preparing. I mean, some of the other guys had been and I'd been helping them, but it's mm. just different. Your mindset's right. not the same. It's just, it's it's not the same. It's It was enough time. Clearly I gave a fucking great <laughs> performance at ADCC. So it's not like I yeah. wasn't prepared. I'm just saying under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have waited till four weeks ahead of time to like start thinking about the rules and all this different kind of stuff. Now, you, you know? haven't fought in, in one championship since May of last year. You know, is there a disappointment that you haven't? You know, you mentioned earlier, you know, you're in this MMA thing now for full time. This is your career. Is there a disappointment you haven't been back in the in the one cage since May? Like, you know, is there specific reasons or, you know, all that kind of stuff? Man, I, I want to fight. I wanted to fight as often as possible. And initially, that was working out awesome with one. Uh, I think like they were getting me fights as quickly as I could take them, which was great. And I think that, that going anywhere else, I would have had difficulty oh, yeah. doing that. Um, I think that it's not, that's just not an easy thing for a lot of organizations to do, especially with somebody of my caliber uh, in grappling. I think a lot of times people don't show up, they pull out, they miss weight, they do whatever to try to avoid fighting somebody who's like pretty good in some yeah. other area. Um, but it's not like that with their fighters. You know, everybody showed up, everybody agreed, everybody was game. You know, it was awesome. You know, I had zero problems. Um, but when I resigned, I think, I think it's at a point now, it's not their fault. I think it's at a point now where we're five and oh, and we're basically like one, one fight away from the mm. title. Or, or ready for the title, you know, hopefully they give me the title I've been calling yeah, for seen. recently. But, but uh, you know, we're at a point where it's like the only people that left to fight that are a step above who I fought last. Like the last dude I fought is like 12 mm. and 3. And he was on like a seven fight winning streak. Like how, where do you go from there other than literally whoever's a title yeah. contender or the title shot, right? And the guys that are in contention for the title – they want the fucking title. So it doesn't help them to fight me. Like that's that's mm -hmm. a big risk, I think. And so I think it's a little bit of difficulty. Like it, I was even having issues with one dude like like moving weight classes. And so they were trying to like – they were saying like, oh, yeah, we'll just do it at like a catch weight or like we'll do it at 170. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to win the 55-pound title right now. Like 
I, why is all of a sudden this dude changing weight class? And I don't know what his mm. reasons for that were. Maybe he really like couldn't make weight anymore, but he'd been doing it for years. So it was weird to me, man. You know, uh, I think it was it was difficulty having getting fights. Of course, there was the contractual thing before that, but um, so I, I I'm not like upset or anything. I think it's part of the. I think it's just it's something that I wasn't mm. used to grappling. I literally fought every month, yeah. if not twice a month, right. on like you know big shows. Um, but it's something that I understand kind of happens in MMA sometimes. And I've seen layoffs of much longer um, by really tough guys. Yeah. You know, just kind of like trying to trying to plan out their career the right way and trying to do things the right way. Or maybe people are ducking them or whatever. Shit happens. So I get it. You know, if I if I have a fight soon, we're good. You know, I like I'm, I'm happy. I think things are going to get on track once I have my next fight. And I, I really do. And speaking of, because I wanted to go to that, I want to talk about the, 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 the stuff on social media with Martin Wynn. I mean, why the preference for Martin Wynn? Because Martin Nguyen, you know, he is the, the featherweight champion. He, sure. you know, it means you going down at Wicked Light. Why him um, to, you know, are you fine with having to go down and make the way to all that process? Is that fine for you? You know, talk to me about why the preference to fight Martin Nguyen. So, um, so the guy I was talking about that wasn't, that was trying to move up weight classes or whatever, it's not Martin. It was somebody completely different, okay, yeah, but, yeah. um, but all I'm saying, so, so Martin has been a title holder in not just, um, lightweight, which is, or sorry, not just featherweight, which is what I'm, uh, attempting to contend at, but also lightweight and he fought for a champion. He didn't win, but he fought for a championship. I guess is bent a weight under featherweight. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the division. Okay, so their bantam weight, which is one forty five mm. at for one. It's it's all skewed ten pounds because their weight cutting is different. Like yeah, you can't the hydration protocols, yeah. You can't cut the way that yeah. everybody else like maybe you could get like ten pounds off. It's not like yeah. a big you can't cut a lot. It's right. hard. So, um based on their rules. So um anyway, so he's dude, he almost like was a title holder in three fucking weight Yeah. I mean yep. in the weight class that he lost. Like even yep. in the uh, thirty five pound or sorry. Their forty-five pound division. I mean, it was a close fight. It's not like he got mauled or anything. Mm. He's a tough dude. He's yeah. a super yeah. tough dude. I mean, listen, I respect him a lot. I, I'm a, a person who looks forward to the future. So I've been looking at the Martin Wynn fight since I started fighting. I mean, I looked at you know when I started fighting uh, in one, he was the fifty-five pound champ and he was the seventy pound champ. Mm. So I had started at one seventy. And even then, I'm like thinking like, all right, this is the guy I'm going to fight. And then I ended up switching weight classes because I kind of thought 170 was actually a little heavy for me. Mm -hmm. I looked at like uh, Rahul Raju, my second fight, and I'm like, damn, this dude is huge compared to me. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. So then I, ju I jumped down and, and that weight class felt so much better. It mm -hmm. felt like we were I was much more equal size with my opponents. And um, and anyway, so still he was the title holder there at 55. So, you know, I've been thinking about Martin Wynn since I started fighting. Um you know, I, uh, again, it's just like, I, I'm just trying to get a fight at this point, to be honest. So I figured who better to call out than the champ because the champ ain't going to be scared of me. Hell, if the champ thinks that I'm going to be an easier fight, he'll take the fight. He said, if he says something like, oh, Gary Tolan doesn't deserve it. It's like, well, he should take the fucking fight then because <laughs> that's the easiest fight. And he's going to make the same amount of money when he fights me anyway. So if he says I don't deserve it, it's almost like a cop out in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think he's gonna say that. I think, I, I honestly, I think he's gonna take the fight. I think if he's smart, he realizes that I am, I am a growing threat, mm -hmm. and with each and every fight, it is only getting worse. Like, think about it. Just, I mean, just think about it logically for a second, right? Like, I've been doing this for maybe two years now. Mm -hmm. You think I'm not going to get better at a rapid rate? I mean, think about <laughs> anything that you would do for two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. The rate of improvement that he's going to have compared to the rate of improvement that I'm going to have, there's just no way. It's it's You can't match it. Yeah. And that's not a detriment to him. That's, that's something that anybody should acknowledge. It's like I'm early in my career. I'm only getting better every, every day. Uh, the longer you wait, the worse it gets. So I think if he's smart, he takes the fight, to be honest. I you mean, know. how does, you know, the process going down? Is, is it, you know, very minimal way you have to, you know, is it just a small dietary nutritional change for you for you to make their featherweight division? And it's not a big deal for you in terms of like going from one down to the other? Uh, no, it wasn't a big deal. I just needed to learn. I needed to understand the way that their weight, their weigh-in practices work. 
Mm. and how like hydration protocol works mm. really like it, i mean sure there was some dieting involved to make sure that my weight was a little bit lower but like it, it's to un, like let me put it to you this way when i had grappled shinya aoki Mm. Um, which is a fight that I want in the future, by the way. The first fight that I want immediately after I beat Martin Wynn for the title, if that's what I get next, mm. is, is Shinya Aoki. Um, regardless, he's not the champ right now, I don't think. No. I'm pretty sure it's... Uh, uh, Christian Lee. Christian Lee, right? I, I want that fight too, don't get me wrong. But mm. the first fight I want is against him because, first of all, I think he's got a huge name. Uh, I think people really respect him in the martial arts, in the mixed martial arts community. Mm. Um, and I think that's a great... You know, a great way to show, hey, I deserve a shot at the 70-pound title as well. Mm. But who knows? I don't know what, what one's going to think. Maybe they'll want me to defend the title first. I have, I have no idea. Right. But that's, that would be the next fight that I, me personally, that I would want. But anyway, when I grappled Shinya Aoki, I actually failed my first weigh-in with Shinya hmm. at 170. Okay. Um, not because of the weight, but because of the, uh, the hydration. So hmm. I, 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 when I went to do the hydration... I was actually dehydrated because I did mm. a, I did a grappling workout that morning. Like I was trying to plan around the uh, schedule. I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, you know what? Since we have weigh-ins at one, let's grapple at like eight a.m. You know, and uh, you know, I'll hydrate up because, because like, dude, one seventy is easy for me. Yeah, one seventy, I literally just like have one less cheeseburger a day, <laughs> and like we're good to go, yeah. right? So, so anyway, like. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be good to go. I, I hydrated up, dude. I drank a shit ton of water after I was done um, doing my thing, and uh, after I was done grappling. And man, I, I wasn't hydrated by the time wow. the test came around. I didn't realize how long it actually takes for your body to process hmm. the water. Yeah. You know, so like, man, it was a learning curve. Yeah. It's not. It wasn't. It was, even at 170, which is an easy weight class for me, the whole idea of this hydration test was so new. The old, last time I took a hydration test, I was in like middle school or something and wrestling <laughs> is some sort of thing. I, I have no idea what we were doing. Yeah. So, so man, it, it, that's, that's the thing is it's honestly not that big of a deal for me to make 55 for them at all. Like in terms of dietary change, like it, like uh, granted it, there's a process, but it, it's just something I needed to learn how to do. Yeah. It's not like I'm killing myself. Honestly, the way that they, the way that they structure their, their weigh-ins, you can't, you can't really kill yourself. No. Like, it's not as bad as yeah. like it's never going to be as bad as a UFC. Exactly, weigh-in. yeah. It just isn't like no matter, no matter how bad your way in happens, it just can't be. Like I just the way that they structure it. I mean, if you made it that terrible, there's, you're probably going to miss hydration. Yeah. So, what's do you yeah. have a, a a date in mind? You know, yeah, you have the substars in a couple of weeks. You know, yeah. do you have a date? Do you want to be back in in cage March, April? What, what so from what I understand, nothing's finalized yet. Nothing's signed. But from what I understand. It's a definite that I'll be fighting in April. Okay. The question is, will I be fighting for the title or will I just be fighting somebody else? I, nobody else has been, you know, nobody, they haven't put any other names in front of me saying like, hey, what about this guy? So, you know, who knows? Maybe they're just going to offer me the fight and I'm going to have to say yes or no. I don't know. But either way, um, it seems like I'm going to be fighting in April. And if that's the case, like, dude, I'm happy, man. I, it is what it is. It took some time to get the contract done. Uh, it's fine. Is there, you know? is there a, well, I, I want to ask about contract, but is there a preference? Is, is there, you know, is it Amir Khan, F. Ting, Timofei Nasyukin, you know, or Shinya? Oh, if you don't you get, mean, who would be, you mean who would be the other opponent? Yeah, if you don't get Martin Nguyen, are some of those the names, because those are the big names, you know, Eddie so Alvarez probably is not likely, but you know. No, that's, see, that's at 70. So the, the few names that I'm thinking of, um, that would be relevant to winning the 55 pound title. Maybe I think his name's Thong Lee, Thong Lee, okay. something like that. He's a tough, like it's got like a karate style. Maybe I'm, I, I could be mistaken in, the, in pronouncing the name. Um, that's one, one guy that I'm thinking, uh, the Russian guy, uh, Gafarov. Okay. Is a potential okay. possibility. He's fought for the title several times. And then there's a Japanese guy, which I think Martin just fought. Uh, I forget his name. Oh yeah, but, yeah. I need to talk about, yeah, the name I, I can't remember either. But anyway, those are the three that, in my mind, they would pair me with if it wasn't Martin. That's my guess. Uh, I couldn't tell you for sure. Like I said, nobody said anything to me yet. 
And then also going back to the contract, uh, so was there a point where you were a free agent available to go to other organizations, or was there some kind? It was just like a a period where you know you were no no more fights in your contract, and then one had the right to to you know negotiate with you first. Yeah, so I never never made it to free agency. Um, we we negotiated things well before then. Um, there's a there's basically a period of time where your you have your contract length in years, and then you have your contract length in number of fights, right? And what's going to happen every time if they if they care to keep you in an organization, every time you were on that last fight, that would basically if instead of the length of time in years would end your fight. And I know you may already understand this. I'm explaining this for anybody that might be yeah. listening that doesn't understand yeah. it. So let's say you have a, I'm just going to throw like a standard UFC agreement out there. Let's say you have a one year, three fight agreement, which is like a r roughly standard, right? Okay. So you got, as you're approaching that third fight, you finished your second fight. If they care to keep you, they're going to be thinking about renegotiating your contract before you have your third fight. And they do fight. that other sports because too. You have a guy in this last year sure. and they'll try to, you know, before. Yeah. Sure. They're not going to let you fight your third exactly. fight and now you're out of contract. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, we'd like to keep you. And then you're like, well, if you'd like to keep me now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, because now, now you can take exactly. offers from everybody. Right? So it benefits, it benefits them for sure to like, you know, negotiate with you early, which I totally understand, you know. Uh, but the, the issue for me is, as far as that's concerned, going to free agency is like, could have I maybe gotten a better deal if I let some other people weigh in on my contract? Like if I had let UFC and Bellator a bit, per perhaps bid yeah. on me, if I had gotten to that point, it's possible I could have gotten a better contract from one or someone else. But the important, the important thing to me is like at this point in my career, like I really need experience. I'm 28 years old. Like I don't, I, I no, by no means think I'm old. But I also by no means think I'm right. young, yeah, give me and uh, I'm very – Let's. I'll say this. I by no means think I'm young, but I am young to the sport, yeah. and I'm old for how young I am to the sport. Let's put it to you that way. Most people would have started much earlier than me and, and would have had much more experience than me. So I'm really just itching to get fights. So – for me to have waited until the end of my contract, then gone into free agency, then heard offers from people, then tried to negotiate those offers, then finally went with somebody, then f tried to restructure a fight. It's like, dude, by the time that's all done and had said and done, it's like, all right, here we are a year and a half <laughs> yeah. now, and I haven't had a fight. It's just, it, it doesn't it didn't seem worth it Did to you, me. You know, it didn't seem like it made could sense. Could you say um, how many more fights? Also, also, by the way, I like working with one. Yeah, you know, like just just putting that yeah. out there. Like, um, it's almost in, in many ways the devil devil you know is is better than the one you don't. You know, I think there's problems with every fight organization out mm -hmm. there, um, as far as you know relationship with with yeah. their fighters. I don't think any everybody's going to be perfectly happy anywhere they are, but I will say that I've worked well with them thus far. So it's like, you know, why am I going to try to chance that? You know that's not going to work out somewhere would you, else, right? Sorry. Would you be able to say how many fights were added to uh, with this new contract, and and did you get a healthy bump up in in uh, in your fight purses? Uh, I don't like to speak about specifics of contracts um, for many reasons. I think actually in the a lot of people do, and they just get away with it, I guess. <laughs> uh, but like, I, I'm pretty sure in most of these contracts, it tells you you're not supposed mm. to do that. So I try my best to, from a legality standpoint, not really discuss. You know particulars of contracts. Um, of course, you know, in a, in a broad sense, of course, I got to bump up and pay. Like, of course, things are better from many different perspectives. Um, you know, I, I I fought to the best of my ability to protect myself and to to get what I thought I deserved. And uh, you know, I think one I think one realized that as well. You know, I think they we came to a good uh, you know compromise, and I think. Um, you know, they're happy with the compromise and I'm happy with the compromise. And, uh, you know, I don't, it, there was no, um, you know, there was no bad feelings on either end. I don't think by the time that the papers were signed. So, um, you know, all is good for now, you know, um, I don't, uh, I, I think, I think I have a bright future over there and I think they see that. And, uh, I'm very happy to be working now, with Now, grappling sports, aside from NCAA wrestling, have really started to get a lot more, uh, you know, attention and traction in the last few years. As, as stars from that sport 
like yourself enter MMA, MMA fighters, dabbling in matches, grappling matches between fights, stuff like that. You know, the industry seems strong with Quintet, Substar, Submission Underground, you know, being other major avenues to, to compete along, you know, with ADCC, IBJJF, Eddie Bravo, Invitational, all those stuff. You know, has the industry come along enough that a truly talented grappler, you know, and grappling athlete can make a good living primarily just doing that or outside of the of the very elite? You know, do competitors in the end have to transition to to you know MMA or find careers outside of the sport? Is is the sport come along sure. enough that guy could just be a grappler and have a good living? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. I mean, it might be an extreme example because he's the best grappler in the world right now. But Gore, um, you know, my previous student, now a training partner, uh, easily makes more money than I do, like one thousand wow. percent. You know, I'm fighting, but and he's grappling, and I I promise you. He's making more money <laughs> than I do on many different yeah. levels, whether it be through sponsorships, whether it be for his actual matches, whatever. You know, maybe per match, he might not be getting paid the same as like I'm going to get paid for an actual fight. But when you add up all the X's and O's of videos and seminars and um, the number of matches, remember, the number of matches is yes. much higher for yeah. grappling, right? So he can take a grappling match per month and that's no big deal. Where I can't take a fight per month, it's not yeah. possible. So when you when you add all that shit in, like one thousand percent, he makes more money than I do. So, um, you know, of course, again, that's an extreme example. But even if it wasn't Gordon, I think it's very possible. I mean, I could have lived very comfortably uh, just continuing to grapple. I mean, people are begging me to grapple mm -hmm. right now. You know, I like literally just have a thousand messages. You know, in my inbox, hey, I want you to do this. I want you to do this against so and so. I want you to do this against so and so. I mean, not not only just because like, you know, they want it because I'm good, but because like I think I have a very exciting style that a lot of people like to see. But all I'm saying is, is like you said, you know, if you're if you're good and you're and you're able to put on a show and you understand a little bit about promoting yourself, absolutely, you can make a great living grappling. And there's a lot of different avenues you can go. Um, to make money it's not just about like whatever a show is going to pay you it's there's a lot going on there whether it be sponsorships whether it be seminars this whether it be running your own school there's so many different things it, and, and it's you know I, i'm glad you you know you brought that up in terms of um is there you know i just lost my train of thought matter of fact i'll skip that question i'll come back to it i you know i i, I want to right. go back because you actually brought up a gordon ryan too and i wanted to ask about that i recently you know sure. spoke with with alexia olenik who grappled with you know gordon not too long ago at quintet and, and, and you know getting subbed by him by getting subbed by gordon you know to use an old school phrase seem really seemed to stuck in in alexia's craw a little bit now you and, and a couple of other amazing instructors were part of gordon's education and grappling to where you know he like he's getting he's nicknamed the king he's one of the biggest stars in that in, the, in that industry for a person like myself self <laughs> that's right. true that's true for a person like myself that you know only follows that industry very loosely you know tell inform me and the people that watch this why you know what sure. makes him so technically and strategically such a, a fantastic you know grappler in that industry all right so a couple different things i mean first of all gordon's has just been an has a, has a natural talent for sure it would be hard to argue that he doesn't um you know, I mean, the, the kid has had a, a great capacity to learn about the sport. I mean, I think, I think everybody has a certain capacities to learn about certain things. Like, there's some really smart people that I'll meet, whether they work on Wall Street or whether they're really big in the tech world, that go into a jiu-jitsu class, and they're retarded, man. Like, they literally – I could tell them to move their left hand, and they <laughs> have no idea what I'm talking about. And they move their, their right leg. <laughs> like – there is some level of right. that. I'm serious, no, no, I, I totally I get yeah, nah, it. No, I know. It's fine to laugh. I'm just saying <laughs> like there's there's some level of natural ability associated with you right. know learning a physical martial art like this. And he had always had that. Now, I'll give him that. Um, along with that, and I think he was exposed to, to some really good influences, um, myself included. Uh, I think that from a work ethic standpoint, because he's an extremely confident individual – I think it was really good that he got exposed to myself um, because I think that had he not been exposed to me, I think perhaps that he may, we would have thought that he could have got away with, maybe not even got away with, but just wouldn't have needed to work as hard as he did. If that makes any yeah. sense. Like, man, I, I, I was just grinding all throughout my life. Like when I started grappling, like there was days 
not days, but there was like periods of le- time in my life, like year long, two year long periods of time in my life where I was getting like four hours of sleep a night because I'm doing 87 training wow. sessions, of course, seven, but I'm making this, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm exactly yeah, but yeah, away, yeah. so many training sessions per yeah. day. I'm working a bunch of different jobs. I was going to school. I was doing everything I fucking could to not only survive, but also thrive in the grappling environment. And I think he saw that and he was just like, damn dude, like this, like, this is what's one of the best in the world is doing. I got to try to yeah. do the same. You know, I think that he wasn't do, it wasn't always doing that. I think he would just looked at it as like, like a hobby that he was really good at. He was pretty cocky. So it was just like, <laughs> all right, whatever. Like I can fucking, I'll show up five days a week and <laughs> I'm going to do my training session and like, you know, I'm good. Yeah. So I'm going to fucking win. Like, it's just the way that his brain works, which is fine. You know, it's great from a confidence perspective, but maybe not from a, a workout play perspective. Um, then he also got exposed um, to Tom the Blass, who is from in a similar mindset. I mean, that's where I got part of my work, work ethic from as well. And, uh, you know, he would do a couple training sessions with me here and there with, at his school. And I think, you know, Tom is, is a really good motivator in terms of mental, um, you know, stuff and, and probably gave him a similar mentality. And then from a technical standpoint, so it's, it's kind of like a, a beautiful recipe here. And from a technical standpoint, of course, like I was relatively good technically, so is, so is Tom. But from a technical standpoint, we were going to the city all the time. I was going to the city all the time, and eventually Gordon followed. Um, and we were getting some of the most high-level instruction you could possibly get from John Danaher, somebody who's literally spends all day, every day, the same way that I spent all day, every day, just grinding and training. This is a guy that spends all day, every day, studying every martial art you could possibly think of, trying to take any little bit and piece of valuable information from anything that he possibly sees, whether it's mixed martial arts, whether it's kickboxing, whether it's wrestling, whether it's judo, the dude spends all day studying. And a lot of people call him a genius, and I think he's very smart. (laughs) But I think honestly calling him a genius is a little bit of a discredit to how hard he actually works to be at that level of understanding and competence in what he does. Like, he spends all day doing this. Like, I don't know anybody else that studies tape like that guy. Like, I just don't. It's He made it his life. Like, he teaches, and then he goes into his office, and he's watching tape. Like, and and then when we're gone, when we're done with our training sessions, that's what he's doing again. And I promise you, when I'm home, <laughs> and I'm going to sleep, or I'm trying to find some other ugly girl to sleep with, he's probably trying to do the exact same thing. He's probably trying to get better at yeah. learning and teaching jujitsu, yeah. and he's obsessed, and it's great, and so it's a wonderful thing to, um, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be exposed to, and I think it's something that myself and Gordon have an honor to uh, to have in our lives, and it's the reason that we drive or that we did drive three hours commute every single day, you know, back and forth to New York to make sure that we got that. I mean, it's not it's not like I do this this for fun. Like, I mean, I do. <laughs> I, I like rap. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. Saying? Like, it's not like I can easily grapple at yes. my gym. Yeah. You know, I don't have to drive an hour and a half and an hour and a half mm. back. But I do because I know I'm getting some instruction from the best in the world. And I know I'm getting something that I can get nowhere else in the world. Um, so I think that's a huge part of uh, of Gordon's success story as well. And now the, the last question, that's what I, I lost track of. That's what I was going to ask because you talk about you, st- you still get a ton of offers all the time now for grappling matches. In some way, because obviously your your name in that side of things was well established before you even got to one championship. But it has in any way, has your MMA career and the success you've had in MMA career, has that bolstered interest from promotions and stuff like that? For, for your grappling, has it taken your name and your stock to another level so maybe some people who you know maybe didn't think of you first and maybe thought of some other people has it even you know gotten you more even more money making opportunities to be pretty much a two sport athlete now sure yes and no um it's hard to say for sure because i attribute it to two things i attribute it yes to the success that i have in mma but i also attribute it to supply and demand yeah. right so think about it like if you had a supply of me grappling once a month or more for years and all this, and people enjoyed it. And all of a sudden, you cut that supply off for like over a year. Demand is just yeah. rising, and there's no <laughs> fucking supply, right? So it's like at, over time, it's like shit, dude. Like we need to get this guy on a show. If we get this guy on a show, it's gonna sell right. out the show, right? And that's what people are thinking when they're you know trying to sign me on a card, right? They're like, damn, man, this is something that you don't get to see every day. Like, you know, and they're, and they were doing everything that they possibly could to get me to grapple. And it just wasn't, 
I was just trying to do MMA, man, and there wasn't nothing was appealing enough until ADCC and, and when I had a little break in my MMA career um, for me to do anything like that. So eventually, it's you know things started to to come into place. But yeah, I think a little bit of it's supply and demand. I think a little bit of it's um, I'm building a bigger. Network.